and welcome back to Handmade by Hannah with me, Hannah, um, to the to this Halloween edition. So today I'm going to show you how to make this bracelet here with using a beaded loom frame like this. Okay, and what we will need to make one of these is I've got some Mayuki orange Jurico opaque 11 O's and I've got some Mayuki matte black 11 O's and that's all the beads you need for this one I've also got one of these slidey clips to slide on the end but I'll show you how to do that later you also need some Eslon D size D thread Usually when I make bracelets I match the thread to the beads but as this is a Halloween-y one I thought I would mix it up a bit. I also need a needle. Now this one I've got a needle which is like just an extra long needle. Now I like these because it's a little bit a little bit more sturdy than using a big eye needle which you can use for these which they have like a nice big they're split down the middle, that's why they're called big eye needles. There. So you can use a big eye needle like this. But I prefer to use one of these as it's a bit more, this is a bit flimsy as this is a bit more sturdier. I could use any needle really, which will fit your size beads and is long enough to go through your, your um, weaving. Okay, and you're going to need a pair of scissors and patience. <laughs> okay, so it's the same on both sides. And I made mine, I think it's about six and a quarter inches long. Um, and that's why I like to buy these um, slide clasps with a chain on. So that if you don't make it quite big enough, at least you've got the chain to allow to allow for the extra space like so okay then so that's that I've also designed a chart here for um, for the bracelet and this is a repeat pattern so we're going to work it this way round though as you can see it's 15 beads long and 11 beads high so each of these squares represents a bead and we're just going to work our way up the chart like this and repeat that however many times you want how long you want your bracelet I repeated mine uh, eight times I think here and it's just under seven inches with the clasps so that's what that's what I did there Obviously with this sort of um, bead you can actually make any pattern you like. You could do a spider, you could do a witch's hat. Um, I chose to do a skull. Yeah, so you can design your own, do your own on your own little pattern. So this is how we go, this is what we're going to do. We're going to follow this along all the way up. So I'll just make some space here, over here. So first of all, we need to weave our loom. What we're going to do is we're going to measure out 16 pieces of thread. So I tend to do it the length of your bracelet. So say you're going to make it, I'm going to make it say a seven inch bracelet, roughly. Um, and I'm going to add another 10 inches to that. So you need to do 16 pieces of thread, which are 17 inches long. Now I have a, I have a ruler that's, um, super glued to my desk here so I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to go off and i'm going to cut my 16 pieces of thread and then i'll be back okay so you went away and you cut 16 lengths of 17 inches so we're going to gather them all together and we're going to do just do a normal overhand knot at the end Everything I'm using here, I'll put uh, in links in the description underneath of where you can get everything. Okay, so we're going to tie a knot at the end here. 
So make sure you get your bit taut and we're going to tie another overhand knot at the end here as well. Like so. And then we're going to attach this to our loom. So these looms are really easy to get hold of. I think Amazon do them. Most beading websites will do them. But I will put a link up, um, underneath so if you would like to get one and have a go at this. Okay, so what we're going to do to attach our, our wefts, they call them. I'm just going to call them threads. And you're going to divide this into two equal parts. So I've got 16. And I'll explain to you why, even though it's 15 beads wide, I'll explain to you why we need 16. So we take eight on one side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and we're going to put that like this so you can we're now going to put this this end there's a little um nail or pin or hook whatever you want to call it and we're going to split this in half and attach that to that now this is why i see you need you need patience for this sort of thing okay and then there's another whoops there's another one on this end so how i do this so i can keep the tension right there's two little screws on the ends of these for your tension so there's one here and one at the other end so i start to see everyone else i've watched do this make it look easy i'm going to make it look really hard obviously <laughs> okay so you just wind that on a little bit like that like so and then we've put the other end on here so we're going to loosen the nut turn that down like that so another little tip when you're doing this is that the space between here isn't maybe not be as wide and as wide for your bracelet so you need to make sure that you allow at one end enough at this end enough to roll down if you want to make your bracelet a bit longer so this end you have a little bit shorter as long as you've got enough to sort the ends out later and then we tighten that up and then we're going to tighten this end up like so there we are there we have it so I'm going to do I'm going to because I'm going to work at this end sorry this end I'm going to get my needle and we want to put each of these little uh, these little threads And they've all got to be in these slots here you can see that so we're going to put a thread each thread in each little slot so we're just going to move them across like so 
And the reason why we have 16, you always have to add an extra thread to however long or wide your bracelet's going to be. Because you need the bead, the beads are going to fit in between, in between these threads. Right, I think we've got it. So if you can see that, that all the threads are in each of the little slips. So I'm going to pause my video and do the other side because you don't want to watch me fumble around and do that. You go off and do that and then I'll tell you what the next bit is. Okay, see you soon. That's the bit you need patience for. I made it look really difficult, but you'll probably find it a lot easier than me. You find whatever way you can do to get your little your little things so we've got them in our 16 pieces there and our 16 pieces there so I'm going to turn it this way round so you can see what I'm doing so the reason why we have 16 is so that each bead is going to go in between these these wefts here going to go in between so I needed it 15 so I need 16 so my 15 beads will fit in okay so we get our beads ready our orange and our black like so and then you use the same color the same piece that you you did on here just do it a comfortable length that you can work with I usually do it um, an arm and a half. Pull out a piece of thread that you find comfortable to work with, because you're going to have to add thread as you go along, but I'll show you how to do that. You thread your needle. Now, on some instructions, they tell you to tie a knot onto here. But I don't like to do that, so what I'm going to do is leave myself a nice long tail, like so, and then I'm going to follow my chart. So the first one's quite easy. I need 15 beads for the first line. So I'm going to pick up 15 black beads, 15, and then we bring them down. towards the end so I like to leave myself a nice long tail and then I'm going to slot each bead in their little slot now this first line is usually the tricky one like with everything that you start and hold your finger underneath and then we're going to get our needle and we're going to slide all the way through them beads on there. Like so. And that captures them beads in there. Now you want to have a good attention, but not too tight attention. And then always bring your needle um, round and underneath again like so okay so that's the first that was the first line now the second line of our chart which is another 15 black 15 and then we bring these down like so And then we're going to slot them in their little, in their little, their little areas. So you'll know if you haven't picked up enough beads because you won't have enough beads to fit in your slots. As I said, I'm not an expert at this, but you do need a bit of practice and a lot of patience to do this. So you've held your beads and you've got your thread that goes underneath. When we're now putting our thread on the top now, so then it holds these beads in place. Like so. OK. 
Okay. So you need to keep the tension so that the beads are together and there's no gaps. Okay, but that will work up as you go, go round. Okay, so you bring your thread underneath again. And now it gets interesting because we've got to pick up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven black and then four orange and then four black. So we want it in that order because when we put them underneath here that's the order they're going to go so we need seven black one two three four five six seven black four orange and four black one two three Four. We bring them all the way down again so they're underneath the, the weaving and we're going to plop them in their little places Let's see as I said it's you need patience a lot of people I've seen on YouTube do this and they make it look so easy. I'm making this look really difficult. <laughs> but the but the uh the actual process is easy. What have I done wrong here? Oh I've got two in one, that's why. There we go. So always make sure you've got all you've got all your beads, you've got a bit of good tension underneath, and you're gonna go all the way through your beads again. Like so. Oh, got a knot. Okay, and there we have it. Our first three lines. I'm going to go through and do all the first repeat with you, and you'll have it down pat by then. Okay, so we've got the next the next line, which is line number four. So we need one, two, three, four black, one orange, one black, one orange, two black, three orange, and three black. So we're going to go four black, one orange, one black, one orange, two black, three orange. One, two, three, and three black. One, two, three. We'll take them all the way down again. And now we're getting a bit of tension on here. It'll be a bit easier, hopefully, to put these in their spaces. And then they should just all pop in. Nice and easy, she says. I think I've got one black bead there that's a bit bigger than the rest. Okay, then we'll go all the way through the beads again like so so doing that you get one piece of thread underneath your beads and putting them through the top you put one one on the top so there's it's basically they're basically sandwiched together on the when you're weaving okay so your next row is this one here so we need three black one orange one black well, that orange bead does not want doesn't like to play doesn't want to play that one two orange two black three orange and three black two 
three. There we go. So you can design any anything you want. You can make it as wide as you want, as thin as you want, as long as you allow yourself one extra thread to however wide you have your bracelet. The design options are endless. There we go. So we've got half a skull face now. Right, underneath your weaving. Okay, next row is this one here. So we've got three black, one orange, one black, one orange, one black, five orange and three black. So always check and double check that you're doing the right row on your chart. It's quite easy to take it out and go back on yourself. So you just have to pull one of your lines out. But I always check and double check which line I'm on so that I don't have to do that. Five orange and three black. Okay. So now we've done a bit of wheat more weaving, it'll be she says it should be a little easier to pop these beads into place like so. Bit hold them up, put your needle through. Like so. Okay. Nearly there. So we're now on this row here, which is basically a repeat of this one. So three black, one orange, one black, two orange, two black, three orange and three black okay so that's our next line so hopefully you can start weaving a bit quicker now we've got the tension right and these are a little bit more closer together so it makes it easy just make sure that they are all popped through Otherwise, when you pull it through and pull your needle out the other end, your beads will drop out, so you'll know you haven't caught them all. Like so. There we are, little skull man's coming to life. So now we're on this row here. Four black, one orange, one black, one orange two black, three orange, and four black at the end there, four, and then down underneath, push them all in, their respective, yeah, what have I done here? I've obviously made a mistake as you can see because my pattern doesn't look right or does it well I've just done an extra I think I just put an extra black one on yeah so I'll just take that one off there we go that's because I didn't read my chart properly after I just explained to you lot to make sure you read your chart <laughs> That's why you should, because mistakes like that can happen. So there we go. Nice tension on there. It's all not looking nice and neat. Right, so we now we need, we're on the last row here. This one, well, last one of the skull anyway. So seven black, one, two, three four five six seven black four orange and four black 
two, three, four. And we go down. Poke them all through. Put your needle through. Like so. And then the last two rows are uh, just 15, 15 black twice. One, 15. And two rows of 15. That's one row and one fifteen, one more. Okay, so do another fifteen like so. Okay, and that's what you should have. So you're going to repeat this. So we've, what we've done is we've done the two rows at the top again. So we've done all of this pattern. But when you start again, because you've already done your two rows up here of your 15s, 15 blacks, you're going to carry on from row three. So you'll do your seven black, four orange and four black. And you'll start again and then you'll repeat that for however long you want your you want your bracelet so i hope that was as clear as mud <laughs> i tried to explain that as best i could i um as i said i haven't had a lot of practice doing this but i've made two or three of them yeah so if you want to carry on doing your bracelet to as long as you need it i'm going to carry on for a little bit further and then I'm, i'll come back and show you how to add thread Okay, so have fun, practice makes perfect, and you need a lot of patience and a glass of wine, I reckon. Okay, so you go off and have fun with that, and I will see you once I've, once I've run out of my thread, and I'll show you how to add a new piece of thread. Okay, see you later, bye. Okay, so welcome back. I've been beading away. I've done four repeats so far, so I just wanted to show you, as I'm running out of room now at the top here, that you can all you all you have to do is loosen your little uh, wing nuts at the end here and you can just roll you can roll your your piece of bracelet and move it along to give you more space to weave. I think that will do it. And then you just tighten the wing nuts back up again. Making sure that all your all your threads are still in the right slots there. like so and then so you and then you can just carry on carry on as you were okay so i'm going to carry on weaving and weaving okay see you soon oh hello well you must be enjoying yourselves because you came back again i'm now going to show you how to um add another a new piece of thread and finish off your old thread so i've cut myself another piece of thread um span long and i'm going to place my needle three rows down three is normally the magic number when it comes to beading but you can weave in and out as many lines as you feel comfortable doing okay so i'm adding the thread from this side because when i go back 
and back there I need to end up back on this side again so leave yourself a good tail so you can sew that bit in in a second and then go back through your weaving again here oh got a bit of a knot there there and then I can weave back to the top here like so and now I'm back on the right side to carry on weaving so that's how you add a bit of thread now I'll show you how to finish a piece off okay so we go back through these beads here and then you go through a few beads pull it through then you just pick up the piece of thread in between them two beads and make a little knot go through another few beads So, I'm just going to use my pliers gently to pull that through. That's it, like so. And as you pull it, you pull a little bit, pull it a little bit with a bit of tension, and then the knot will disappear under your bead. So I try and try and do it three times, and I know it's all secure. And then I'm going to take this one through, through the rest of them, like so. And you can't even see the knot I just made. Then I'm going to thread this so that it goes in between some beads. And then cut it off and there you have it and you can't even notice the beads where the knots are or where you finished it off and it keeps it all secure and stops it from falling to pieces okay so then you just thread re-thread your needle again and then you just carry on weaving which is exactly what I'm going to do so I'm just going to carry on weaving till I've got my eight repeats and then I'll be back to show you how to put the lovely slide clasps on. You'll also need some glue for the next bit as well. Um, super glue will do, or if you have some special crafting E6000 glue or some beading glue, then you need to get that ready for the last bit. And some sellotape and some spare bits of paper. I know that sounds weird, but it'll all make sense. Okay, so I'm going to carry on weaving and I will meet you back here. Okay, see you soon. Okay, we're nearly there now. So I've weaved my eight skulls and I'm just going to sew in my, my end here. So I'm going to go, first of all, I'm going to go back through this one here. And then I'm going to go back through this end one here. Oh, that's a bit too tight. <coughs> and then And I'm gonna finish off like I did with the I did earlier. So 
for a quickness I'm just going to do that one knot there I hope you can see all right I've run out of light today so I've had to use some I've had to use a lamp so I hope you can see all right and then I'm going to go back on myself again here and then cut that bit off and then I'm going to do the same again with this end here and then I'll show you I'm going to take the weaving off the loom so I'll just finish off my other end and I'll be right back okay so I've weaved in both the ends and I'm just going to loosen it and take it off the take it off here and there you have it your piece of bead weaving all finished so I'll show you how to do one of these ends on here so you just cut your knot off now I'm going to need a bit of patience here but it's worth it to get the to get the nice finish that you want so you've got all your all your ends here so we're just going to separate them with two here and then we're just going to do a double knot so we're just going to knot once don't pull too tight though but tight enough just to knot it and twice like so then you do the same all the way along but I'll just show you these ones first and then we do these this pair here that's why I said you needed patience to um, make one of these that's one And two and two knots there and then you do that all the way along so you do the next two and then the next two and then once you've done that you go you start at the beginning again and you take your pairs that you knotted like so and then you knot them two together so you need to pull tight so that the knot kit stays but not over tight otherwise you're gonna rock up your beading there and that's what you do all all the way along so you tie this pair and this pair and then once you've tied the knots there you then tie the two pairs together so I'm going to go off and do that and then I will come back and show you what to do next okay so I thought I'd join you at the last lot of my knots so we can go through it one more time so you're going to get your pair Like I say, you need patience, it's a bit fiddly this, but it is worth it. Okay, so we're going to double knot here, not tying tight, but not too tight. And then tie these two. It's one and two. And then we're going to tie those two pairs together. One and two. So that's what you should have now. Looks a bit like a spindly mess, but it will be fine. So now you need to get something that you don't mind getting glue on. And 
just to keep them bits out of the way. I'm going to sellotape them there. And these ones here. There, so I'll take them out of the way. Now I'm going to get some super glue or crafting glue or any sort of glue. And we're just going to dab a little bit on the knots that we made. Need a lot, just a little bit to dab on there. Doesn't matter if you get them on the first set of beads here because we're going to be covering them up with the clasp. That's that one there. And a little dab of glue on these ones. I mean, you don't have to glue these up, but it just gives that little extra bit of security. There we go. And then we wait for that to dry and I'll show you the next bit. Okay, then we're back for the final bit. So you take your, you've, allowed, you've done all your knots and you've allowed your glue to dry. So you just trim these bits off here. And then you do the same the other side. Okay, and then these slider clasps, they do what they say on the tin basically. They've got um, a gap in here that you can slide your beads into. So you just grab your bracelet and As with everything with this bracelet, everything I've tried to do seems to be really hard today. So why should this be any different? <laughs> okay, so you just slide that on the last end of the beads, like so. Sometimes this end bead can be tricky. And then you just close up the end. And that gives you a lovely tidy finish. And then we just do the same on the other side. I might have to trim this down a little a little tad more. And then that should have a slidey bit on the air on there. And you just go in one bead. And that should slide <coughs> should slide all the way down like so you've trapped your your ends and your first row of beads in there fold that over and there we have it little Halloween project I was meant to do it a little bit sooner in the month but um, I haven't been very well I've been in hospital and I've been off sick this week so I didn't get to manage to do this earlier but I hope you enjoyed this loom weave um, bracelet another little um, another little craft that I've given you a little taster for. I've got a few more ideas coming up. If you enjoyed this, will you, will you hit the like button and share my videos? I'd also like to thank all of my new subscribers. It's um, so humbling to have so many of you subscribe to my channel. So I'm going to try and, um, try and put a little bit more content up more regularly. But you know life, 
you have to work and look after a house and all sorts of other things happen so I will try again I'm gonna put another video up I won't tell you what it is I'll leave it as a surprise okay so I hope you enjoyed this Halloween bracelet and you make some and make some for your friends or your children and I will see you next time thanks a lot for watching bye